morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Hi, Pastor. How are you doing, Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Amen. Jesus came as the 
light of the world. And uh, before we get into the word, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer this morning. Thank you, God, once again for all of his goodness. Father God, we thank you for this new day. Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for just waking up this morning, Father God, in the very breath in our bodies we know belong to you. And Lord, we're so grateful and so thankful for all that you do. You are a God that has never lost a bat. You are a God that has never lost a case. And we thank you this morning for this day. Father God, now we ask that you bless this Sunday school lesson this morning. Anoint your servant, Father God, that I may speak your word and that your word may go forth and not return void this morning. Father God, we want to thank all of those that are here this morning at this present time. Father God, those that are on the battlefield, continue to lift you up, Father God. And we pray for those this morning that are watching my live stream this morning, that they too may hear word, Father God, and return into the house of worship once again. We thank you for all you do. We thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for the upcoming service, and we thank you for our guests this morning. Father, you're just so good, and you keep on doing miracles in all of our lives. We thank you, we thank you, and we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning, if you have your Bibles, if you could turn to Matthew's the fifth chapter, and we're looking at verses 14, 15, and 16. And we're going to talk about that light. And those verses read something like this. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be healed. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine this morning that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Praise God. That is the main scripture. Let your light so shine. Are you letting your light shine this morning? Are we all letting our light shine? Well, I should hear a few praises out here this morning with your light and shed. <laughs> Praise God. So, as we look at this word light this morning, uh, I want to step off into the dictionary term because I happen to look up the word light, and light or visible light is electromagnetic radiation when within the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that is perceived by the human eye. Now, so they said visible light is usually defined as having wavelengths in the range of 400 to 700 nanometers. What our visual range can see to our eyes. These are our lights, right? Now, as we look at that, it's also to give light, cause light to shine. Now, we can walk into a dark room and not be aware of ever going into the room before you might stumble, you might fall, and you hit a switch on the wall, and all of a sudden everything is illuminated, and you can see everything in the room. Well, that's how God felt. That's how he felt when the earth was without form. We can jump right back into Genesis now, the first chapter, and talk about this light that's in our heart today. He's come, Jesus has come to bring that light in our hearts. And that's what he wants to share with us this morning. And so, the light of God. And the scripture says, in the beginning, I'm right in Genesis, the first chapter now, 
God created the heavens and the earth, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. God didn't like darkness. Because we don't talk about you know, my darkness is not so good. <laughs> now, uh, the Bible tells us, and God said, let there be light. You put it right out there. Let there be light. And God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And that was God's first day of work. Now, as I'm reading this, and I realize that Paul, over in the book of Corinthians, the second chapter, and uh, the fourth and the sixth verse, draws a parallel between the original separation of light and darkness and the conversion of a sinner. Did you hear me this morning? The conversion of a sinner from darkness to light. And so Paul states in the sixth verse, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined into where? Our hearts this morning to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And now just remember who's sitting on the mount talking, this is Jesus. And Paul here compares the conversion of a sinner to the entrance of light at the dawn of creation. And then in the first creation, God commanded the light to shine. But in the new creation, God himself shines into our hearts through Jesus Christ. And so God created man originally as an innocent being. And sin came in, and with it, gross darkness. Glory to God. Sin. But Adam and Eve in the garden told them to tend the garden. And here along comes Eve. Did God really say that? We'll leave that out. And sin was produced in that beautiful garden. And so, uh, and the gospel. And, and the gospel was preached, as the gospel was preached, the Spirit of God moved on the heart of now of a person, just as God moved on the face of the deed of creation. God is still moving. And the reason why I say this, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. That's the beautiful part about who he is. Now, um, God wanted us to see in creation his work and his glory in, in and his glory in them and we might work our work while it is day. Now, the work of Satan and his servants are works of darkness. Mm -hmm. That's why God separated the foundations of the world. Sin had come. Romans tell us we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and 23. But then Romans 6 and 23, the word of God tell us the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. We have some place prepared for us when we walk this Christian journey in the will and obedience of God today. God wanted us to see that work, and he says to us that uh, the, then God shined into the heart of a person, and he was showing them a guilty sinner and a need for a Savior. I like that this morning. Way back then. The material creation in Genesis began with the light, and so also does the spiritual creation. We're now in the spiritual creation.
creation. We are under grace. God chanted to our heart by the Holy Ghost, and then spiritual life began. God shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And then I loved it when Paul put it this way. But we have these treasures in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. The glorious message of the gospel, treasure. The gospel is like a precious diamond. It takes care of all of our needs. And the reason why Paul said that was because any way that you read God's word, it shines, yeah. it's brilliant, it's for our needs, it takes care of us, it surrounds us, and it's like this beautiful diamond shattered so beautifully all around the day. That's how God's word. And he wanted us to know that these earthen vessels, frail, fragile, you can do absolutely nothing without Jesus Christ in your life this morning. You couldn't even breathe on your own this morning if you don't wake yourself up. That's the power of God to show his glory through each and every one of us. We are not alone. He is with us all the time. No matter what we go through. And when I hear people say, I go through, yes, we do. But God knows every single thing and every Sunday morning I say this about you and I and all of us. He knows where we're at. He's not a God that is not looking down on us. He's a Catholic God. He's a good God. And oh, how he loves us. That's the reason why, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that who shall so believe in him shall never perish. Yeah. but have eternal life. Right. This is not all there is to it, people this morning. There's more to this journey than we see right here. God has a home for us to come to our eternal home where the tabernacle is not made by man, but by the hands of God. Yeah. But by the hands of God. And so this morning, he tells us that the message, 1 John 1, 5 and 7, the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light. Jesus speaks about three or four times on this light. And in him is no darkness at all. And let me just say this. There is no darkness in God. God is absolutely holy this morning. Amen. God is absolutely righteous this morning. And he's absolutely pure. There is nothing that's not righteous about our God. And now comes Jesus. He does not look with favor this morning on sin either. Nothing is hidden with him. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hebrews 4 and 13 tells us. We're going to give account to him. Never mind these people here on earth. Never mind what people say about you. Don't feed into it because I tell you this. We're going to be judged by the almighty God. And one of these old mornings, or one of these old evenings, Jesus is going to part that sky with you. Are you serving a true God today? Do you know who he is? And then the Bible comes along and tells us, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his son 
cleanses us from all sin. It keeps on cleansing. Let me tell you this this morning. Most people think that once I confess my sin, I'm saved and sanctified. I'll never see it again. <laughs> now it don't work like that. <laughs> he keeps on forgiving us because we're in this frail human form here. Sometimes we say and do things that have thoughts that's not of God. So what are we doing? We're going to God. And we are speaking to him. Lord, I see you. And David used to do that all the time. David said, I've sinned, Lord, and sinned against the only. Lord, wash me. Wash me with this. And I'll be clean. That's what he does for us all the time. We are his children. And he knows we are weak. He knows that we go through. He understands everything about us. And that's why we can trust our lives to him. Because he's a keeper. Yes, he's a keeper of all that's good and perfect. So as he has come, and now Jesus Christ is going to do a work on the cross of Calvary to lead that life with us. And let me just say this. You don't want to walk in darkness. You want to walk in light. And you want to remain in that light. And as I said at the beginning of this lesson, it is a difficult process to walk this Christian journey. But nobody told us it would be easy. But I love the fact that he's already there. He's ever present in our life. And Jesus was trying to tell us, said that uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us once again from all unrighteousness from the book of John 1, 4, and 5. Now, and John tell us, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Look around you today. God's light is still shining. His light is not out. Is our light shining? That's the question that could be asked this morning. Are you talking and sharing your knowledge of these treasures in earthly vessels with other people along this journey? Are you stopping to tell someone, God is good. God brought me through sickness. He brought me through pain. He brings me through trial, tribulation. Whatever else you tell somebody else, God's good. I could not have made this journey on my own. I could be standing here this morning unless God brought me through. You have to know who he is. That when Jesus is trying to get the disciples to see. And the multitude that's sitting on that mount. When you say that your light is shining have your light shine. Put it out there in the open. Yes, people are not going to like you for it. It's okay. You're not being judged by the world this morning. You're going to be judged by God Almighty in his kingdom. Yes. That's who you're going to be judged by. And then the Bible tells us that John 5 and 35, he said, he was a burning and shining light. And you were willing for a season to rejoice. Now, let me just share this with you. This is what Jesus said of John the Baptist. He was a shining light. Are you a shining light this morning? Do people know that you're a Christian? Do they see that walk in you are all of the characters? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the peacemakers. Do they see that in you, but that is that light that's shining through you. And he said he was consumed in pointing others to Jesus. John the Baptist was out in the wilderness, and John the Baptist was preaching, 
and teach him. And they thought he was a wild man. But John didn't care. What did you come out here to see me ask him? Because I will continue to do what I do. He was a forerunner for Jesus and he was a servant of Jesus. And Christ said this, Jesus said this about John the Baptist, for any servant of God, of Christ, to, to, for him to call a burning and shining lamp is true praise from the Son of God. That's why John the Baptist was removed. He was out preaching and telling a dying world God is real. He is real. So as John, as um, he continues to look at this, we pray daily that we ourselves become a flame of fire for heaven. That's what God is looking for in these last days. We are in a pandemic. We are now coming through it, but look around you. So many people who walked the Christian journey two, three years ago are afraid to come into the house of God right now. Oh, I have to be careful. I'm going to catch something there. Same people you can see out in the supermarkets and on the sidewalks and going to the doctor's shop. But I have a fear of coming back to the house of God. How can we be flames of fire unless we're edifying and lifting each other up together in the house of God on the Sunday? Are we long and burdened by the hardship of work and the tiredness of life home and all the things that take place? So when we come together, we bring joy to one another. Amen. We bring it. Gifts of praise and glory to say, you know what? It was a trying week, but I made it. I made it over because Jesus was there with me every step of the way. I made it through because God kept his angels all around me. You can't even ride on the road out here unless you see an accident in somebody's car is tore up. And you thank God by his grace that it's not you. He's a good God, and he knows all about us. And so when Jesus is the light who came into the world, he was that sinless, spotless lamb of God who died for the sins of all the world, and still many resented him. No matter how much Jesus went about teaching for three and a half long years, he knew that there would be so many that still would be lost. I say this today because no matter how the preachers preach and the word of God go forth, people just listen, give lip service, and walk away still with heart and lost. Oh, yeah. And we see that around us. In John 3 and 17 and 19, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. But the world through him would, might be saved. That's why he's sitting there. He wants the world to be saved. And he's equipping his apostle because he said, Boys, you don't have a lot to go through. Stay strong. Know who I am. Learn about me. Watch me. Take on my character because you're going to need me. Paul said, no matter what, I'm going to run on to see what the end is going to be. I'll keep moving forward because he's God worthy, worthy of all of our praise. And then it goes on to say that, but he that believeth not, the Bible says, is condemned already because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. The condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Woo! Look at your TV. My Lord, my Lord, evil. So things that I'm hearing now 
It's just man rock. Evil, yes, it's a lot of evil out there. And if you don't have the protection of God out there, Satan is going to and fro throughout the earth. Seeing who he can devour and shift his wheat. He wants all of us. But you know what? When we are Christians, God places a hedge around us. The enemy can't come now. We are protected. And so God this morning that is not a harsh God. He's not a cruel ruler. His heart is filled with tenderness and compassion today. And he has gone to the utmost in order to save the world. His son did not come to condemn the world, but God sent him to suffer, to bleed and die in order the world through him might be saved. Jesus is that light today. This light that we carry on the inside of us belong to him. We shine through his illumination in our lives. You're not doing it on your own. You see what? God said, I wanted the light to shine because he knew that if that light shined, that we were going to walk in righteousness. We were going to walk in holiness. We were going to be obedient children of his. So that's what he looked for in our life. And Jesus, again, in John 8 and 12, he tells the multitude, he turns on the multitude, and he says to them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. The world is in darkness or in sin, ignorant and aimlessly look around you. Oh, the light of the world is Jesus. And apart from heaven, let me just tell you this, there is no deliverance from the blackness. None, absolutely none. And that's why he said, let your light so shine. That men may see your good work and women may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Not about you this morning, Sister Evans, has nothing to do with you. I sent you out there to tell them. And listen, he sent me out here to say it's not about you glorifying yourself. It's about you glorifying me because you're weak along the way. These treasures the vessels weak and without Christ in our lives. Philippians tell us, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. That strengthens me. I cannot strengthen myself because I don't have Christ in my life. I have nothing. And apart from him, there's no guidance along the way, no knowledge, and no real meaning of life and the issue of eternity. You won't have an idea. You won't have a clue because he leads us and God is in a righteous path. David said that he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Not David's sake. Not Sister Evans' sake. For his sake. He leads us in the path of righteousness. And Jesus promised that anyone who followed him would not walk in darkness, but have the light. Now, Jesus wanted his disciples to know, as well as us today, that we need to be salty and have that light. However, but the one who does not trust him, once again, is already condemned. Uh, it is up to each individual to decide they will accept him or reject him. Now, Jesus Christ has already finished the work of salvation. And he wants us to know that. He spoke it on the cross. It is finished. It is finished. And 
And so uh, we it's a terrible thing, however, this morning to reject such a gift of love from God. Don't reject it today. To follow Jesus means to believe on him and come to him in repentance, to trust him as Lord and Savior, and then commit our whole lives to him. Let me just explain this also. We can't give God 99 and a half won't do. He tells us I want 100%. If you can't give me 100, you won't make it into the kingdom of God. And the Bible says to us, while you have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. And these things Jesus said in John 12 and 36, believe on him while there is still opportunity. By doing so, we become the sons of life and the daughters of life and will be assured of direction through life and into eternity. Tomorrow is not promised any of us. You could lay down tonight and go on home and leave this world. And if you have not been caught up with God, don't look to enter the kingdom. Woe is you. When the Lord presented himself to the nation of Israel, they rejected him over and over again. He came back to them with an offer of salvation. But they kept on saying, no, no. And even after performing so many miracles, when people close their eyes to the light, God makes it difficult to see the light. And so this blindness in God's judgment is God's judgment for refusing his son. And here's a very good example. Look at the children of the Israelites. The miracles that God performed for these children in the wilderness for 40 long years. But he said to them, you know, absolutely nothing I can do for you. Man from on high, he fell. Moses hit the rock and water came out and went into the desert and they never went back. The shoes never wore out nor under their clothes. God got very, very angry with his children and said, I can just explain this to you. Since you want to be so rebellious, this generation will not leave the wilderness. And they did not. They did not. Even though God loves us. And he keeps giving us chin after chin after chin. But still, people turn their back on Where's your wife? Is your light shining? The illustration of light was apparently one of Jesus' favorite because he mentioned it four times in the Word of God. In John 12 and 46, Jesus said, I am the light of the world again, that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. Once again, apart from Christ, we are in the deepest darkness. And apart from him, we have no once again understanding of life and death and eternity. But those who come to Christ in faith no longer grope around in the truth. Remember the rule I talked about when I first started Sunday school lesson about going in this room and it was a new room and you're groping now in the dark and you don't know where you're going. God is not a God like that. We serve a finite God that knows where to place everything in your life. He knows it already. He lets his light shine on you so that you can have his light and to glorify him. And as long as we are continuously to glorify him, God will keep his hands upon us and he will give his angels around. And the things that Jesus taught were not things he made up himself. 
or did he learn in the school? A man. Rather, as the obedient servant and son. What did I say? He was an obedient servant and son. And what are we supposed to be today? Obedient servants. Sons and daughters. He had only spoke those things which the Father commissioned him to do. And the word he spoke was the word of God. And men refused to hear it. Jesus was teaching the truth of God. And so the Bible tells us that uh, in Romans 13, 12, and 13 and 14, this is what the Word of God tells us. The night is far spent. I like that. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light, let us walk honestly, as in the day, and not in rioting and drunkenness, not in ch uh, chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust there. What are we putting on this morning? We're putting on Jesus Christ. And the, the Bible tells us that we, that we look in Romans 13 and Paul writes that we must take up the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand when the conflict reaches us fierce and intensity. No matter what comes, we're letting our light shine. Don't put your light on the bush. He didn't tell you the journey would be easy, but when the conflicts come and the difficulties come and the trials and tribulation come, he's going to be there. And he said, the evil days probably refer to any time that the enemy comes in like a flood. He gives us no warning. But he gives us his word that we can stand through it all. Jesus Christ, when he was tempted by Satan on the mountain, I keep going back to that. If Jesus had to use the words of his father, then we too have to use these wonderful words in the Bible this morning. They weren't written just to look at and not understand it. He said, it is written it is written, Jesus said, it is written. Say it. Can't be behind me. You have no authority here. That's your light. That's that saltiness in you. You're not going to take this body down. Yes, we all go through. Yes, we go through trial and tribulation. But God is ever present. And he said, we put on the first piece of the armor is, it mentioned is the belt of truth. Walk with the truth in you. Know how to answer every person that asks you a question about what is your hope in God. We all should have hope here this morning. We all should know that we are on this journey to make it in today. No matter what besets us and what comes our way, he's going to keep it. And he's going to allow his light to shine within us. Don't set it under a bush. Let everyone know that you are a child of the Most High God. And then we need to put on the breastplate of righteousness, where the righteousness of God is the integrity and the uprightness of his personal life. Did Jesus walk in righteousness? Yes, he did for three and a half long years. And the people, many of them, are the same as they are today. How do we rise above it? Through the power of Christ Jesus. And that's going to be next week when we talk about 
that Holy Spirit that rules and reigns on the inside of you. When you speak life, you can heal your own body. He's given us his word. And his assurance that it's going to be all right. God has given us that. And, and we put on that breastplate of righteousness. We have to put on the shield of faith. That whatever comes, I'm not going to let you pull me into it. I'm not going to let you think that I'm going to fall to your level. There's a bigger God on the inside of me that you know nothing about. But I will use it. And I will show you glory in my life. That's what he wants to see in all of us. Rising above all of the obstacles that come. Yeah. He's a good God. Oh, yeah. And he yeah. says to us, I will never leave you nor forsake you along this journey. Right. You know who I am. And pray. Oh, pray. Prayer is one of those things that any time you want to go to God, we don't have to go in the closet. Sometimes I can be in the office here at church, and when things get a little hot inside the office, Lord, you know where I'm at. Touch my body now. Touch my mind. See, that mind is critical because the mind is where all the devastation takes place at. See, your mind begins to play tricks on you. Satan wants you people to see you with your God. Yeah. He likes that. He you have to be careful in how you answer a person and seize them by God's grace and his mercy. Yes, amen. You have to pray for that every morning. Lord, lead me this day. Because I can't make it on my own. That is the beautiful about God's life. Pray. You can pray anytime. And you don't have to wait to pray. The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace whenever you need me. So, the present age has almost ran its course. The day of eternal glory is about to dawn for believers. And we must cast off once again the garments of worldliness and everything that has to do with unrighteousness and evil. Paul tells us that righteousness, that light and darkness has nothing together with each other. Absolutely nothing. We must put on the protected covering of a holy life. And from walking in Christ Jesus. I don't fear what man can do to me. Because you're speaking life. You're reaching out to God. And he hears our prayers. He knows all about us. And we need to, which is the armor of light. The armor and the element of true Christian character. And believe me, we're all going to need this before we leave this earth. Evil is rising and it's getting stronger. Because Satan knows he is in the last days. So he's trying to seek and devour as many as he can. Stay on God. Keep your mind focused. Keep the light of God shining within you. And one more thing, the word of God. Read this word of God. This is your this is your protection. Everything that you need from God can be found in the Bible. Yeah. And he finally tells us that uh, the work of light and darkness is not to be together. And the Bible says in John 12, 30, 35, 36, Jesus said unto them, he said, yet a little while, is the light with you. Walk while you have that light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. That's like the room with no light. 
Christians are the reflection of Jesus' life. Our role as disciples and servants is to shine for him to be the city that is set on a hill high above, surrounding and shadows in the midst of darkness. Jesus, just as the moon reflect the glory of the sun. Isn't that beautiful? We are supposed to be that city set on the hill. And our light is always shining. No matter how we feel, no matter what we're going through, yes, you go through death and you go through situations and you go through pain and you go through financial difficulties and you say to yourself, Lord, am I going to make it through? Maybe somebody stay here. And the gift of us, I'm not going to leave you, don't forsake you. I love you so much. And you know why? Because I've given my only begotten son. And the light within you is him reflecting through you. And that's why we have to keep that mind guarded, protected. And as we close out this morning, the word of God tells us that uh, we are the children of God and that God's example of forgiveness is that he needs for all of us to be followers of him. Don't leave God. He wants us to follow him every single day of our life. The enemy comes to once again sift you as wheat. But God wants you to know that I want you to be followers of me. And then he says, walk in love. And also to show us that Jesus has already paid the price for your forgiveness. He's already paid it. The Bible said, whosoever will, let him come. Let him come. So when we are looking at this light, and God spoke to close out, he spoke to the seven churches in Revelation. Didn't quite understand what the seven churches was about. But God was trying to tell the churches, many of them had gone into fornication, lost your first love. Where is your light? Church, where is your light today? To all of you, as you leave here this morning, let your light so shine that men may see your good works. Oh, I like that. That person is a saint of God. Let your light so shine that men may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. That is what I want to do this morning. What a God we say. Let in our light shine every moment, every second, every minute of the day. And I mean this is seven days a week. I'm coming to church to smile on Sunday. <laughs> it said, my light is shining today. Your light has to shine Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Even in the worst of company, your light has to shine. Let God know that you're a child of the Most High God. And that's what His Word teaches us. And when we come back together again, we want to speak also on how. We keep that light shining and preserved in all of us through the persecution and all the things we go through until eternity. And the Holy Spirit is a powerful, powerful, powerful. this morning to God be the glory although it's something that was said that our lights continue to shine throughout this week but let's bow our heads in a word of prayer Father God Lord we thank you for your word this morning Lord you're just so good to us and we thank you for the light now that's shining in all of those that are sitting out here this morning and for the light that you keep on shining on each and every one of us 
I'm going to let you arm off from God. You love us so much. And Father God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your treasure, Father God. Thank you for the gift that you've given us, Father. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues this morning, we couldn't praise you enough. But Lord, we thank you this day for your grace and for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> well, let me get on the way. That's how I let you find the road. <laughs>
Good morning to you that are here in the sanctuary and you that are listening by live stream to the Bayshore Assembly of God Worship Hour. We're happy this morning to have a guest with us uh, to do some singing and also some speaking. Our sister Patty Bow from Art Song, and uh, we just welcome her and welcome you to the, be part of this service here this morning. But let's look to the Lord in prayer for his blessing on all that we do and say this today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of coming together to worship you and worship the Lord Jesus who gave his life on the cross of Calvary for each of us that he might give to us eternal life. And we thank you for that provision that you have made for us for the forgiveness of our sins and for our name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life and for eternal life that's provided for us through your atoning sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, for this time of coming together. Pray your blessing on every part of this meeting. May the Spirit of the Lord minister to each one that's listening. And grant, we pray, Lord, that every need shall be met in the heart and life of every individual in the home and in the families represented here today as we are worshiping you and we'll give you the praise and the glory. Bless our sister Patty. Continue, Lord, to strengthen her and anoint her for the service and work that you've called her to do this day. And anoint our ears to hear and our eyes to see and our spirit to uh, give Jesus the praise and the glory and worship that is through his name. In his wonderful name we pray and all God's people said amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm happier to be here than a centipede in a foot tickling contest. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been here for about three years, and man, God is good. When you're with people at our family, he does something uh, where he just fuses you together. He makes that seamless, almost like when you go visit a high school buddy and you pick up with your conversation like the years we're never a big expanse in the middle, amen? That's what I feel like when I'm here. I've, I've been here, coming here for years, but I just missed y'all. I have been here for a lot. So I'm singing a new CD this morning. It's hot off the griddle. Butter will even melt on the top. And uh, so you got to remember, I'm not a worship leader. I'm a singing preacher. There's a big difference. The Lord gave me a, a vision because I... When I went back to work after the pandemic, I said to him, Lord, what am I going to do? What do you want me to do? I said, change. What do you want me to do? And he said, right now, your job is this. The body of Christ is like the pickup truck. The back part of the pickup truck is in the mud. The parts are getting rusty. The, the wheels won't move. And it's stuck in the mud. But the front of the truck is sticking up and it's bright and shiny like you drove it off the lot. He said, your job is to help the pastors get that truck out of the mud and back on the road moving forward again. Can I have an amen? So, and he talks to me in so many parables and he gives me songs that are parables also. And um, so it's not your... It's quite a unique kind of ministry, and I pray this morning that you do enjoy it. <clears throat> the first time 
I ever, oh, I've got a monitor here too, right there with the words on it, just like YouTube. I don't need anybody to catch up with the verses or anything. It's just all right there. You can just go with the beat of the music and the words are right on the monitor. So I hope you can see it way back. Well, this first song, when I read Psalm 15, the first time I read that, I was mortified, terrified that I could not live up to it to be qualified to live on God's holy hill. And I said, what am I going to do, Lord? I don't know if I can keep this. It's just, it's just so hard. And then after I got in the Word, I realized that Jesus helps us do that. Amen? Amen. And so I want to sing about that holy hill, and uh, maybe you can relate. <laughs> For your people, the ones who always do what's right. Their tongues are tight and dry, so on this day and night. They never wrong their neighbor. Keep a promise till it first. Guns who never bore false witness, nor say the innocent by force. They are praising on the hillside with the lyre and the tambourine. We can hear the horns of blasting. We're so excited by the sea. They are praising on the hillside. Angels join them with their hearts. Testing it. And the simple sound is on the in your hearts. Woo! If you're rolling the green, I think you're on that hill right now, isn't it? We are climbing up to join them to reside in all their tents. They never charge any interest on the money that they lent. We are running up to greet them in their lives. They have no voice. Lord, you yourself have told them they will never be destroyed. They are praising on the hillside. With the lyre and the tambourine, we can hear the horns of blasting. We're so excited by the sea. They are praising on the hillside. Angels join them with their hearts. Test the net and the symbol. Sound is on the steps of their hearts. They are praising on the hillside. It's the mountain of the Lord. Can't wait to get there to a world in one They are praising on the hillside with the lyre and the tambourine. We can hear the horns of blast. We're so excited by the sea. They are praising on the hillside. Angels join them with their hearts. The testament and the symbols. Something's on the steps of their hearts. Praising on the hillside. Evan's um, 
Bible study this morning and she stole my thunder. <laughs> yeah, so there's parts of her, her talk that were um, in my message today. But I'm bringing it, I'm going to bring it in a, in a different way, try a different angle. Anyway, so anyway, I just got, uh, I got new technology up here. More than Elon Musk. Yeah. So I'm a little bit slower on here. But uh, you know what? I'm still a cowgirl. Do we have any cowgirls or cowboys in the bunch this morning? Well, this is, a, this is country music, but I don't have the um, steel guitar anymore. I took that out a few years ago. I just got tired of it. But I got go Go-Ro guitar, and I got fiddle, and I've got um, uh, banjo. I got all that. So if you listen closely to the instrumentation, you'll know that uh, I really haven't changed. <laughs> you know that story of the woman of the well when Jesus gave her a word of knowledge? Yeah, you've been married all these times with these guys, and the guy that you're with now is not your husband. And she just went, whoa. <laughs> wow. Then she went out and saved the whole town. Can you imagine if Bayshore, every single person in Bayshore was saved, was a believer? Those that walk in their own way wouldn't have a chance in this town. Well, I had my imagination on it. I believe the Lord was in it. And I believe that the town is something like this. It's a cool Sunday morning in a town that built up its fame. As one of those places that pierces the heavens with flames. This town's quiet demeanor is known as the children walk by. With prayer on their faces and seeking a godly reply. Can you hear the praise? Come on. Can you hear the praise? The Holy Spirit is shaken. Can you hear the praise? Can you hear the praise? Stirring hearts that are aching. Can you hear the praise? Hear the desperation from all that walk in the street. Filled with selfish ambition. Let no one will fill with this peace. Jesus' manifestations show up in the midst of day. Something's hardest of hearts to go so far away. Can you hear the praise? Can you hear the praise? Oh, sing servant hearted. Can you hear the praise? Can you hear the praise? Can you hear the praise? Can you hear 
You know, sometimes when I set up a song, I've got to kind of tell what I'm singing about, because not everybody reads their Bible. I've 
getting some denominations and it goes So I set it up. I have to set it up. There's that place where, you know, Elijah, um, Elisha was gonna have a, a school for prophets. And it got to, it got overrun. It was, it was bulging at the seams, and so they put a new one together. So they went out and, uh, so they, you know, we were working with the timber and so forth, and this one prophet, he borrowed an axe. And so what happened was he was holding, he was working with that timber, and the axe head fell off. It just went flying all the way into the river. And Alicia was there performing a miracle. The axe head floated. And, he, you know, then that young prophet had to jump in the river to go get the axe. The miracle didn't put the axe through the air and go whoop right on the top of his handle. No. It's a good lesson for us that we have to be participatory in our miracles. We have to be, you don't coach potatoes at Bayshore Assembly event. You have to be participatory. There's things that he wants you to do. You just can't wait. Well, I, I, I'm going to tell this little story. It's, there's a woman in my church years ago. Just, I'll just call her Ellen. Ellen didn't have any teeth. And she kept praying to the Lord for teeth. She wanted beautiful, pearly whites. And the way she wanted it, she wanted she wanted to wake up one morning and have her early night. And she kept praying. You see, some of you are some of you are, are chuckling right now because you know, you know, well, I'm not gonna comment, I'm gonna let you judge. But what happened was two dentists stepped up to the plate. I mean, she was not she was, you know, poor lady, elegant, really cute, always needed her teeth. She did. Two dentists stepped up to the plate. I will give you teeth. Free. Two times. Wow. Oh no. I don't want that. I want God to put them in my mouth while I'm sleeping. Many of them had miracles that you did you tell God how he's gonna do it for you? You don't tell God how he's gonna do it. Amen. Ellen died with no teeth. So what so what I'm what I'm saying is there's ways that he does things. Amen. You know? Yeah. And your healing might be where you're seeing trees and not people yet. Yeah. Oh well. I feel a sermon come on, but that's not the one I want to talk about. So let's do cutting edge. You already know the story I just told you. Gloria's going to 
this shiny throat for other people to be encouraged, man. Woo! some of those, God can use you for the prophetic too. And we prophesy according to our faith. Amen? Amen. So most of the time I, I flow in word and knowledge. But something that's happening in the last two years is that God's been healing people in my services and I don't know what I'm doing. I could get a big bowl of popcorn and just watch the show. You know, and they say, oh, four people got healed in the service. I'm like, really? Really? I mean, I, I'm just amazed. And then the emails that come in later, especially those that they went to the doctor and that cancer's not there anymore. Yeah. That's just an example. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, and I have read parts of F.F. F. Bos Bosworth's Christ the Healer. And it's so needy and so heavy, and I know that it's going to tell me what to do, and, you know, and just uh, because I want to have an understanding. How many of you know they have an understanding? Very important. So anyway, this is how I feel about the prophetic. Lord, say something to me to help a sister gather home. Lord, place understanding from my lips to a brother's slippery slope. 
5241. And we're here from 7 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the evening. And uh, actually, it would be best to call till 3.30, because then our secretary leaves at that time. But uh, we, we offer this service to you free of charge and encourage you to contact the church, 665-5241, for the next meeting. The meeting is usually every other week, and it's made up of people who have experienced the departing of a loved one, or I should say, especially the spouse, and it's an, designed to be an encouragement to you and a blessing to you if that's been your experience. So please call the church at, at uh, any time on Monday through Friday, or of course, just let us know here uh, before you leave the service today. And we have a lady who's in charge of that program who will be happy to talk to you about the next meeting. And um, Pastor Dave, you have an announcement to make also? <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Wow, well, it's wonderful to see such a good group here this morning. God bless you. Um, this pertains to the women of, of the church. An event is coming up in the uh, beginning of April. Uh, the women of Long Island section of the Assemblies of God will be enjoying a weekend conference the evening of Friday, April 1st, and Saturday, April 2nd, from 8 in the morning till noon at the Huntington Hilton. Registration is only available online and will be available till March 8th or till uh, seating runs out. Please see Darlene uh, for an information card. If you're interested in this event or you would like to attend, please, uh, after the service, meet in the room just to my right. We call it the conference room. Meet in the conference room at the end of the service if you're interested or would like to attend. Thank you. Amen. Now we're now going to receive our uh, missions offering. This offering is used to not only to take care of the needs of our local church, but also to help the mission. There are a number of missionaries throughout this world that we support, and also children's ministries in three different countries. And we appreciate your faithfulness and uh, supporting these missionaries and this missions program. And let us look to the Lord in prayer for his continued blessing on our missionaries in this program. Father, we thank you today for this opportunity now of giving our tithe and offering to the church that the missionaries that this church supports may continue to receive their needs being met and that the gospel of Jesus Christ will continue to go out Strengthen those missionaries, Lord, that are preaching the word, and bless also the staff members that are working with the children. And grant, we pray that many, many adults and children will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as the word of God goes forth. We thank you for this missions program. We thank you for the faithfulness of your people. And pray, Lord, that many yet will make that commitment to follow you. And we'll give you the praise and glory for all things accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, and if if uh, if Patty would have another song at this time by the offering to be received, that would be great. Before she speaks.
Go on like that. Whew. I do come this morning with the heart of a missionary. Always preparing for everything that I have to do with the next time, the next time. It really is. This is a huge uh, mission field right here. Right here. Huge. Father, I'm grateful for this door that has been opened all these years for me. Father, I ask you to just empty me right now that I'm nothing in myself that I can say or proclaim it. I ask your Holy Spirit to come and minister through me to hearts, those of that are watching on the screen, those that are in the congregation this morning, that, that today's word would heal and bring revelation and encouragement. Give us ears to hear. My pastor says, he doesn't say Happy New Year, he said Happy New Years. Happy New Years. He wants us to hear with ears on a new level, Lord. Amen. We constantly have to grow and go forward. And I just pray this morning that somehow, someway, you're lifted to a higher level. Not having arrived, I'm just giving you this, what he's given me. So I say, let it be birthed here right now, that hearts will be open to receive in Jesus' name. Well, like I said, I want to have some fun this morning. So I want you to use your imagination, and I also want you to think about those around you. I want you to take a look around, behind you, next to you, to see who's here today. Could you do that for one second? Just, just take a look around. Okay. Raise your hand if you know these people really good. Pretty good, I'll say that. Y'all you all know each other pretty good? Okay. You, you just said the right answer this morning. <laughs> I'm looking around this morning and I'm seeing teapots. Teapots. We're going to personify a teapot this morning for a moment. Now, you know the people in your church? Some people are fine bone chunky. They're just so beautiful and light and airy, but if you knock them, they're going to break. They're fragile. Fragile. You don't like anybody like that in the church. Then there's the ones that are sturdy, that have the grog mixed in the clay, and they've been made on the potter's wheel, and they're so sturdy. You know who they are. They're sturdy. They got a hefty handle to them. That teapot, when you go to pour it out, it's one heavy teapot. And, and you know what? When you ever buy a teapot that somebody's made on the potter, potter's wheel, you always check the bottom. If it's bottom heavy, it was a beginner. The ones that really can really work that uh, potter's wheel are the ones that make thin bottoms and are thin all the way to the top. That's a little art. I've been an art teacher for years, so that's what you're getting a little, a little uh, teaching there. And then there's the ones that, the teapots that are fiesta wear. All the bright colors, the vintage ones that are fiesta wear, amen? Bright colors, they light up the church, they're so colorful, they're dynamic and, and wonderful to look at, he's always got something interesting on, amen? And I'm even talking about the pastor that wears a bright red tie. <laughs> right? Fiesta wear. They have a colorful Personality as well. Their clothes always reflect the inside. At least, I'm not talking the runways, okay, but I'm talking for the most part. I, I, I grab black too often because it makes me look thin. Anyway, that's right. <laughs> then there's some teapots that are actually art objects. They don't look like a teapot, they're all angular. Their shape is undetectable. How would water come out of that? They're so artsy as teapots. Do you know anybody like that? They're out of the box thinkers. They've got new angles all around them. Different kind of a pot. But being in church as a teapot is an action concept I want to talk about today. It's an action concept. It's just not attending in a church building. 
You have a function. Do we train ourselves and fill ourselves in life so that we are ready to be poured out? That is the function of your teapot, no matter how kooky you are, is to be poured out. Some people, not all, some are looking to be poured into only. How many of you know those people? You can fill up that pot and it runs out the bottom. Hard place to be in. But some people, they want to pour out. What is the structure of that teapot that takes action? To be in the church. So take that action every time you come to church. It's a certain kind of teapot. I'm looking around right now and I'm seeing these teapots. I don't know you, but I see different shapes and sizes. I see different colors. I see different materials. You've expressed yourself in different ways and what you've chosen to wear to church today. But here it is. Here's the goods. Here's the goods I'm talking about. And I want you to apply this or apply this uh, scripture to your vessel. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, this is the good stuff now. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against, against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you and cover all these virtues. Put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ d dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom through songs, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God through the Father. Amen. So today I hope that I help you get there with this with this. My question to you, and this is the time to take personal inventory. Now, I didn't come here to teach up. I came here to have fun. But there's a, a serious side to this also, as always. <laughs> My question is that, what is being poured out of you? No, I'm not going to sing. I'm a little teapot. I'm not going to sing that. But it depends on what you're filled with. And that's some of the things that Sister Evans uh, touched on today in, in her, um, in her um, Bible study. It's not your outward shape that we use, it's what's on the inside. It's what's in the tea bag. I want to talk about that in a minute. We may look different, but we all have the same purpose to be poured out. What are we filled with? How can we be poured out? Here are the intentions that make for a great working teapot before you come to church. One that's highly functional. It starts, and I'll get this, many of you might have those bad mornings before you get here, and you wonder how you made it at all. It starts in the morning on Sunday. Here's your blueprint. It starts in the morning on Sunday before you enter these doors. That your heart is prepared even before you get here. That you take a moment with the Lord and have time with Him before you come into church. And I don't care if your prayer closet is your car, that's important too. Ask yourself this is before, this is actually before. You start boiling that living water for that tea set. You know what I mean? Raise your hand if you're a tea drinker. Okay. Lord, what, 
Ask yourself these questions. Lord, what should I do to be ready to go to church today? What should I do? You're going to get the answer. It's going to be different from, from everybody. What should I do? Lord, what should I come with? I'm ready to give. Whatever it takes. Whatever it is to help somebody. Whatever it is in the offering. What should I come with? How should I come? You come ready to receive. But you know what? If you come, if you came this morning because you want to check out Patty Doll, you want to inspect Patty Doll or Heart Song, God's not going to move. But if you came here to receive from me something that the Lord would give you, now God moves. Now He stirs God. Here's that heart preparation for the living water in you. Now get this picture. The water's on. Okay? The water's on. The preparation for the morning tea is in you. Okay? Think about that. We're getting ready to place the tea sacks in the water. And what happens with that? And why is that? We're getting ready to put those tea sacks in the water of precious ingredients. Every teapot here, put those precious ingredients inside. What is, what is the importance of those bags or sacks in the scriptures? There's several meanings to that. I'd just like to run through a few of these because I thought it was a, a, a lot to, I mean, I thought it was a good thing to learn. Bag in Hebrew, in the Hebrew word, meaning means shepherd's bag or wallet. Sometimes it was cone-shaped. Naaman in 2 Kings 5.23, in his sack he had two pieces of silver for Gehazi. Bound up, bound up two talents of silver in a funnel-shaped bag. Isaiah 3.22 referred to, it was referred to as crisping pins or satchels carried by Hebrew women. Keys, K-E-E-S in Deuteronomy 25.13, means a bag for carrying weights. Purse, Proverbs 1.14, and a cup, 23.31. Jacob's sons carried corn in bags they bought from Egypt. They brought from Egypt. Bundle bags were used for travelers for carrying money during a long journey. The bag that Judas Iscariot carried was a small box or chest. But what was common in all of these types of definitions I'm giving you? Precious ingredients. Precious ingredients in Bible class. And I just gave you the scriptures, and I don't have time to look at that. every single scripture, but you can look it up. I'm going to tell you, I was in Maryland staying at this woman's house, awesome lady, and she was a tea drinker. And at the time, I wasn't really that much into tea. Uh, I, I wasn't, and um, she had a personal stash. <clears throat> now, this was in a glorious looking tin, and when she was going to brew me up a cup of this, she, she went in the back of her cupboard and pulled out this tin. And she opened the top of it and she said, Patty, smell this tea. And I smelled of it and it was the most heavenly thing. And she paid a lot of money for it. And it was a heaven, it was just so beautiful and fragrant and the, the aroma was just so heavenly. And I looked down inside the tea bag and it looked, there was some, I don't know, petal for flowers and uh, flowers, and there were other things in there almost looked like dried bees. I don't know. I just I just looked at it and I just it was just a heavy it wasn't dried bees, but it looked like it was some kind of flower that looked like that. And I just, you know, I had a quick look, but it was just it was just heaven. You see, she shared her precious ingredient with me. I only got one cup. I could have went for more, but I only got one cup. 
But I want you to know that if you love just plain old Lipton, that's your special ingredient. It's just as valuable. It's just as valuable. Now we're ready to, to place the bag of ingredients in Colossians 3, what I just read. The water of the word contains what you personally want. Your wealth wallets, your sacrifice to the church. This church has shared its time, its funds, and help with this community. Tea bags in the water. Here comes the aroma, a heavenly aroma. And what do we do as tea drinkers when that happens and it smells good? It, we let it steep. We let it steep. It goes into our nostrils. Oh, you know where I can go with this one. It's that beautiful aroma in our nostrils. And it's that what's in your tea bag is going into the Lord's nostrils as well. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the Father through him. But we can't be, but we can't pour out unless we're filled up. We are that tea bag in the water. Let's do that. So now it's steeping. But we can't let it steep too long because it's going to get cold. It's going to get cold. It's even going to get lukewarm. And that's not good. What happens is the aroma stops. But it has to be just right to be palatable. So that when you drink it, you not only smell it, but you taste it. And it's in the love. It's in the love. Are you at the right temperature to be poured out? It's important to stay fresh, but to stay vital. And I don't care how bad it gets out there. Fresh and vital. Your vessel, when it's emptied out, it needs to be cleansed before it gets filled back up again. As you give to people, you empty out. You empty yourself out. You pour out. But there's no room in that tea bag if you're filled with bitterness, rage, anger, malice, jealousy, lying, self-doubt, selfishness. Honey, nobody's gonna know, nobody's gonna want what you've got. There have been people turn to Christ because somebody had the, what they wanted. Their light was shining, Miss Evans. Sister Evans, their light was shining. She preached on, on light this morning. I often hear this after 22 years of being in, in ministry. Well, I'm, I'm leaving that church because nobody's using me. One of the first things I think of is, hmm, what's in your wallet? What's in your tea bag? <laughs> But be fresh and vital as a teapot. Confess to one another. Confession empties us out. Repent when bad ingredients want to flow in that pot, that vessel of yours. Proverbs says, if we try and cover up our sins, we're not going to be prosperous. That's a biggie. That's a biggie. If you try to cover it up, deny it, whatever. Throw a cat litter on it. Whatever you do, you're not going to be prosperous. I know it. Oof. Christ's sacrifice covers our sins so we can be filled. So what's in your sacks of tea today? What are you dripping or running with? And you know that last act, you know, um, when we take the tea bag out, what do we usually do? We squeeze it to get every last time. Every last drop, we squeeze it and it even makes the, the, uh, the water more amplified. John 14, 15 through 17, if you love me, you will obey what I command. The benefits, the beautiful benefits of that is you get a counselor. You get the spirit of truth. 
You will know him because he lives in you. He's a precious ingredient in the end. Don't ask your church, well, what have you done for me lately? Come early to give, not just to receive. Come with gifts for others. They will be filled more than ever. We will be filled with it more than ever. Come to receive also, you wonderful bunch of teapots. You're wonderful. It's not a spectator sport. So join with me right now. I know this is, it may seem kind of silly, but hold your teacup up right now. Hold your teacup. And I want you to sit right now with <laughs> the great ingredients of God in your life. Just take a sip right now. Amen. I love you. One last song that kind of just wraps it up like a wrap sandwich. And what we're talking about is being sanctified, actually. Thank you, Lord, for what you did today. We spent a long time in this weary world Waiting for the Lord to take us home Can you stand please? But it flies by like a feather in the storm And the day comes no more to roam So we ask for every blessing he bestows Keep us free from sin and despair Cause the true path to the final reward is the narrow road that gets us there. You gotta be sanctified to reach the gates of heaven. You gotta be deep inside the guiding light. You gotta be purified. Consecrated by the master, you gotta be saved by the blood to make it right. You gotta be sanctified. Come on, now. you gotta be sanctified. He'll put us through the fire and test us as gold. Minus like silver, so they say. We should listen hard to the words of Zachariah if we're yearning for the perfect way. They will call my name and I will answer them. They will say, The Lord is my God. For there's no freedom freer than heaven gives. They are my people, says the Lord. Come on. You gotta be sanctified to reach the gates of heaven. You gotta be deep inside the guiding light. You gotta be purified. By the master, gotta be saved by the blood to make it right. You gotta be sanctified. 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 Woo!
want to receive a love offering for the ministry of our sister Patty tonight and uh, want to ask the ushers to come and uh, let us look to the Lord in prayer for his continued blessing on our sister and her ministry that she traveled from place to place. Father, we thank you for today and for this opportunity that we've had to come together to worship you. Thank you for the ministry of your sister Patty. Pray, Lord, for your continued blessing upon her, continue to strengthen her, anoint her and empower her for the call of God that you have given to her to go here and there to preach the gospel and to sing. Pray, Lord, for your blessing. May people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as a result of her ministry and continue, Lord, to use her for your glory and we'll give you the praise and the glory for it. As we give this offering, Lord, we give it parts of thanksgiving and praise for the ministry that you've given to her and trust indeed, Lord, your continued blessing upon her as she travels from place to place for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Rest the ushers to come by and receive the offering. And we want to thank you for each of you for coming today. Trust indeed God's blessing to be upon you throughout this week as you minister for the Lord. Amen. I have seen these out on the table. Josie is handling uh, the table and uh, um, new CDs out there called My Heart is Home. We just sang it today. And um, um, the, the little earrings are for, I use it for gas money. So it's uh, 15 for one CD or you get two for 20. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. These, uh, these uh, CDs and whatever are at the, in the back of the church, we encourage you to purchase one before you leave today. Uh, it's good. Uh, good for that.